This is my specialized fat boy. Fuck. This is my specialized fat boy e-bike conversion. I've been riding it for about a year and have over 3000 kilometers on the motor. It is powered by the Bafang BBSHD motor and utilizes the ASI back 800 controller. Power is supplied with a 52 volt battery. I'm going to run over some of the things I've learned over the last year and hopefully give some people ideas and help with their own conversions. I don't think there's anything getting around the fact that the stock controller in my opinion is just not very good. Um, it's not very sophisticated, it's difficult to program and it's not up to the spec of the motor by any means. You get much much better performance with uh, an external controller. Um, with, the, uh, with the stock one here um, you just tend to get a snap on the chain every time you turn the motor on or off, on or off, whether it's pedal assist or the throttle you know you're constantly jarring the chain and then you're jarring the rest of the mechanism at the back and I'd rather spend money on beer than you know new derailleur and new chain and all that stuff the motor itself is brilliant whoever designed it did a fantastic job it's not the best at shedding heat though which is why you have to be quite careful when you pair it with an external controller this one pushes 50 amps and 2800 watts peak and that's on a 52 volt battery but all you really have to remember is to use a big gear at the back which takes the stress off the motor by making it spin really really fast as soon as you start to bulk the motor down with low rpms then you're going to build up lots of heat in the casing and that's when you melt the nylon gear but brilliant motor like you can put three times the rated power and run it off a 72 volt battery which is incredible for something that says 1000 watts and 48 volts on the side of it. When I was riding on the stock controller I found a way that would make it smoother when using the throttle was to effectively replicate what this is doing and that was to spin a couple of times, put a couple of rotations on, pedal assist maybe level one or level two, and that would get some power going through the chain. And then while I was doing that, then you would come up and twist on the throttle. And that does exactly what this does by keeping some tension in the chain. One of the things that concerned me the most about installing the motor originally was getting it secured properly to the bottom bracket area. Um, but in reality, it's pretty simple. Um, what I recommend is getting one of these, which is a nice solid tool, and that goes over the lock ring, and that secures it into place. And you use a torque wrench. Like, it says in the instructions what torque you need to get on this inner lock ring in order to secure it to the bike. So just, just use the torque recommendations and that will secure it. And I've had no problems and I haven't seen any of the issues that I have on motors I've seen online where you find the motor sagging and rocking and wearing away parts of the frame where it's bound on. In order to get the best chain line, you want to use the best Lecky bling ring for the job. Um, when I first did the install, I went with the, uh, the 36 narrow wide. And unfortunately, if you can see, the offset is not as much as on this 42 tooth. And it was much harder to bring the chain line to hit this big gear. Um, I also tried the, uh, this one I think is the 46, yeah, the 46. And although it had the good offset as well, um, it was just too big and it hit this and it wouldn't clear it at all. So choose the right one and I think for most bikes it's going to be this 42 tooth narrow wide lecky bling ring. So you don't really need to have 
upright cutoff like here and a button cutoff like here and a gear sensor like you have doing down here because at the higher levels of power the gear sensor is a little bit useless anyway because I'm only in this one big gear so I'm not changing gear so why have a gear sensor and even when I did have the gear sensor what I found I was doing was I was going off of the power on the motor and then I was just spinning the pedal a couple of times changed the gear and then I got back on the uh, the power of the motor again so you don't need a gear sensor to cut off power if there's no power going through the motor so it's a nice idea but in reality it's not needed um, this gear sensor up here only the slightest movement like like this cuts power so if you really do need to stop it you can just do it do it with one little movement like that um, this I've never used I, I mean pushing it cut power to the motor but I just it just doesn't it's not needed I think honestly I'm gonna get rid of all of them so the ASI controller has this engagement mechanism which keeps about 50 watts of residual power running through the whole drivetrain and that means that when you change gear you can use that 50 or 60 watts of power to change the gear um, which is not very much and it does a very smooth job of it um, so if you are still using gears and you use an external controller again you don't really want to have brake cutoffs so I think honestly I'm going to be getting rid of them so the uh, the egg rider display is one of my favorite upgrades that I've made to the bike um, it's very small discreet boots up quickly um, Display's a little iffy, but uh, it's very good for the price that I paid. Uh, it has the controls very close to uh, to the grip here. Uh, I've been very happy with it. Uh, I do feel kind of sorry for the developers having to deal with the fang crappy firmware, but um, yeah, I really like it. I would recommend that you buy your battery from a reputable manufacturer. Um, mine was from em3ev.com. Um, it's a 25.6 amp hour triangle pack. Uh, it has a Bluetooth BMS, um, lots of safety features including fuses for every single battery cell used in there. And it was produced using a reliable and high quality manufacturing process. Um, you could buy a cheaper battery but they tend to glue them together and they're not fused and they use cheap BMS and well I mean you get what you pay for right I think safety is important so I spent more money on a battery so the breakdowns that I've had have been mainly uh, mainly chain related and uh, the next time the chain goes um, because I'm not really changing the gears now um, I'm just going to switch it out for this um, chunkier, thicker uh, six-speed chain, um, which will still fit through everything and hopefully will be more robust. Um, the only real problem that I had encountered um, was the free wheel coming undone at the back and pushing the axle off this inner mount, which is uh, quite annoying. And in the end, I fixed it with some blue Loctite and just made sure that that axle doesn't come apart. So no issues anymore since then. In terms of braking, it's a 203 rotor on the front and 180 millimeter rotor on the back. And I'm chewing through pads on the rear every sort of three months and on the front every sort of eight months or so. And I'd recommend using hydraulic brakes with any kind of bike that can go this fast. So that's the end of the little tour. Um, if people have questions, let me know. If I've missed anything you want to know about, yeah, ask me a question in the comments and I'll do my best to, uh, to get back to you.